I'm going to try and explain how you can use <clears throat> a TDR like the CS90 to help diagnose any trouble with uh, cables like a heating mat um, or just general cables. So first thing to remember is a TDR is going to show you a reflection from every change of impedance of a cable. So in this case I've just got the so approximately two meter test cable connected to the unit and we can see the end of the cable here. Now as soon as I take the uh, twisted pair adapter and I connect that to this you can then see that there's now an open circuit a little bit further along but there's still if I change to the upper trace we've still got the transition of impedance at the end of the cable here and then we've got the transition a little further along which is here I can prove that that's where that is because I can short this and you can see that this is the end of my now test lead. So say if I want to test a heating cable, so here if I've got a heating mat, it's got a ground shield and we've got the uh, live and, and uh, neutral connectors. If I take these and I hook these up, now watch the display. I got one connection, nothing. If I got the second connection, now we're connecting into the uh, heating mat. And what we can see here is that we have the launch, uh, the, the input cable to the heat mat and then the heating cable beyond it. And what we have is a transition of cable type just here. So if I move my cursor to this point and I place a marker, what I can then do in the overview trace, if you look down here, we can actually see the end of the cable. Now that is actually incorrect because at the moment I've got an autom uh, uh, automatic cable type selected as a, as a coaxial cable. Now I know the heating cable because I've, ch I've done the calculations and checked before and it's important to do that is to know what the characteristics of your cable are. It's definitely not an RG59 coaxial cable. In this case I actually have someone set up as a heating mat which I've created as a custom cable with a VP of about 0.55. And what we can then do is adjust all the distances. And then when we go out to here, which I'll do now because I'll move the window using the cursor keys, I'll move the window over to the point of interest over here. Now, interestingly, in the lower trace, we can see what's going on. But there's nothing visible in the upper trace. Now, why is that? Well, the overview trace is done with the 25 nanosecond pulse and the detail trace is done with a one nanosecond pulse. There is a very slight dip here. And because heating cable is by, by its nature resistive and lossy, um, the pulse that's gone in there is being stretched out and, and, and ex expanded. So what we'll do is go into the upper trace. We can do that by pressing the parameters button and we'll press to the second one to get to the pulse. And we'll increase that to 25 nanoseconds. So now we can see the same pulse zoomed in up here. And I'm probably a little bit beyond the start of that. So if I go to the upper window again, oh, sort of stay in the upper window, and I move my cursor a little bit to the left, I think the start is around about here. So that measures us 49.4 meters. And that ties up quite well with the calculations I made for this mat. I've got a four square meter mat, it's approximately half a meter wide, and I calculated that the cable is actually about 49.1 meters. And so therefore this VP is approximately right. So everything's tying up and this is showing me the shorted end of the two wires which are within the heating cable where it loops back. So this is good. If this distance was not quite where it was, then maybe I'd have seen a damage to, to the cable, a short or an open circuit at some point, and that could help me try and find out where under the floor um, this cable was damaged. If you'd like some more information about Tempo products, please visit tempocom.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date with the latest information we provide.